stuff everywhere. Anyway, uh, hi, welcome to Monkey with a Spanner, Monkey with Armor, Monkey with Shields. I'm a monkey. I don't know what I'm doing in most things. But we're going to talk a little bit about shields today. Now, uh, it's not really a shield if we're talking about jousting. What it is, in many ways, is the thing to aim for, the target. Now, we use this term quite often. In French, et is a diminutive, so something that's smaller. Um, so a helm, et. These aren't really helm ets, these are helms. Which is why it's annoying me that there should be a giant crumpet. Surely that's just a crump. And if you wanted to have something bigger than that, that'd be a grand crump. Anyway, you can't have a big crump et. Make your mind up, unless there's one in between. It's, it's, it's too confusing. So these are not targets, This is because they're not small. These are a Taj, bigger than a Taj et. It's easy really, isn't it? Now here's one I made a long time ago, several years ago. Uh, this got Dominic's heraldry on here. The, the stag cooped uh, gold and silver and uh, blue tongue. And on the back, uh, the motto of the time, it's not applicable now, an allegorical scene that he found on a, uh, a picture somewhere that he wanted. This was, uh, shall we say, this was very relevant at the time, not now. So this has had a hard life. This is where the armour has been rubbing on it. It's rubbed away my hard work and my painting. And just in case you're wondering, it's three ladies nailing a heart to a crucifix. Uh, Boosh your mouth, theoretically, so you can either put your lance in or so that it doesn't encumber. Now, you don't carry it like an infantry shield. This is worn because your left hand is on the reins. Theoretically, you're controlling the horse with your legs, really, and the lance is taken up with your right hand. So your right hand is always occupied with the lance. Your left hand is on the reins. You haven't got a hand to hold your shield with. So it's strapped to your body or bolted to your body in various methods, depending on the period and, and the style of the shield. But essentially, it goes here. So this is the place you are aiming for. This is your target in modern English, but we're aiming for our target is the Taj. And it's scooped for two reasons. One, that you can get your hand out from underneath it, still, still protecting you. Another reason is that, uh, where's my coronel gun? I have a coronel oh there it is. <coughs> now another reason is that the coronel, with its multifaceted head, can bite into that more easily. So this is more likely to catch your opponent's shield and therefore it's more likely to break. Plus with it being wood, not metal, and the prongs on here are likely to catch into the wood bite. You can see the damage that's been done uh, over the years and this is this is before we were using these steel coronels but there's still quite a lot of damage done to that. Even you can see here hits where the sockets of the replaceable enders hit on several occasions. Make quite a gouging mess. Uh, so this is how we used to do it. We don't do it that way anymore, partly because they didn't. We've moved up so uh, now we have much larger bits. This is work in progress, so it's much, much larger. It has a, a recurve on it as well. We're even doing ones that not only curve in this plane, but also then curve back again. Like, for example, here's another one I made. Let's look at this one, shall we? So this one now, uh, much, much larger. The same principle, you can see all the straps on the back hold it to the body, so one around the arm and one around the neck. So this one has been strapped up weirdly. Uh, and curiously as well, I've forgotten about this. We, we prepped this in a field, it wasn't supposed to go into service, I brought it along as an example, but it had to be pressed into service and we used uh, Her Majesty's currency, I'm afraid, for washers, which so, you know, technically isn't allowed, but it, it's for English heritage, it's in England. But we have a curve on this plane, but it also then recurves around the top, not as much as I wanted, but it does. And we're also working on ones now that have a curve in this plane as well. It also has these, in this case, very deep uh, flutes, these ridges along the surface, which are to catch the lances as they come in. Now, this is very thin, this is not intended really for combat, and indeed, uh, I'm afraid, the first 
day out of this particular Taj, the rider fell off and broke it. So he fell on it and broke it. That's not good, is it? So uh, a much, much different shape. Here's another example. Uh, again, just a single curve with slight ridges in here, only slight. But again, all designed to catch the lance and catch the coronel. Covered in canvas to help protect it and to hold it together a little bit. This isn't part of the heraldry, by the way, that's just masking tape because it was falling apart. It has a hard life. So now we're using these bigger ones, like this one, which has the three dimensional stuff, so two curves in different directions joint it up and put back together again and they are then at the early days this again is in working progress so by having these recurves and gouging in carving in the ridges it's much much more robust and takes away a lot of the weight that there is there currently but if we're using solid lances this is kind of what you need um, and although this is theoretically to take the lance the, the bouche the mouth as in the mighty bouche, that is probably too small and probably never will actually receive the lance. Plus, you can't see it because you can only see here, so you can't see the thing, can't feel it with your hand because you've got a lance in. So there's that fraction of a second. The odds of it going in are actually quite small, but it's decorative and they did it, so we do it. So, this one is going to change a little bit, but essentially, that's what it does. Yeah. One of the things you don't want, uh, you spotted on this one, for example, again, still work in progress, it's going to change shape. If there's too much of the shield protruding over your shoulder here, it's going to act like um, well, some sort of lever, I suppose. If, you, if you're struck here, it has a tendency to pull you around, flip you back, which can be one of the ways of unhorsing. Usually people are unhorsed not by the power of the blow, but by being twisted in the saddle. They seem to get twisted out rather than oof, straight backwards. It tends to not happen. So if we look at the shape of this one, for example, there's not as much over the shoulder, but there's still plenty to stop it catching underneath your chin. We also very often put in a, a large pad here to stop the whole thing rolling back onto your body, because otherwise once you're struck in the upper part of the shield, it just compresses into you. That's not good enough either. Tages and targets. What are you looking at, Pink?